This, this is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we turn now to Honduras, on Friday afternoon, there was an attempted assassination on Bertita Zuniga Cáceres. She's the daughter of the murdered Honduran indigenous environmental leader, Berta Cáceres. Bertita has stepped up her political leadership in recent months and continues to call for a full and independent investigation into her mother's assassination on March 2, 2016. She's carrying on her mother's fight against the Aguazarca Dam, a project planned to along a river sacred to the indigenous Lenca people. Well, on Wednesday, Democracy Now! spoke to Bertita Zuniga Cáceres at her home in La Esperanza, um, in Honduras. I asked her about the assassination attempt. This is he, as she just took on her mother's mantle of head of the organization Coping. But I asked her to talk about what happened to her last weekend. So, I'd like to give my greetings to you, Amy, and to everybody. Um, and as you mentioned, on Friday, June 30th, when we were returning from a community where Copin has, uh, you know, continually worked, um, we suffered an attack on our way back. Nosotros nos transportamos, pues, en uno de los carros del Copín que es más conocido. Um, and we were traveling in a, a vehicle that belonged to Copín, and it's a vehicle that is recognized um, as belonging to Copín. And we believe that the attack um, had to do with a conflict over water and water sources in the region. And that conflict, um, we also know that USAID has played a role. Conflicto suscitado la comunidad que dio producto al ataque. Realmente, bueno, nosotros no nos esperábamos esto eh, y fuimos eh, de alguna manera embestidos. So we didn't expect the attack. Um, we were traveling back from the community when a vehicle passed us at high speed um, and blocked the road in front of us and men jumped out with machetes and also threw rocks at us trying to attack us. And then as we escaped, they pursued us. Persiguieron intentando sacarnos de la calle. Explain driving and then who the people were who came up behind you as best as you could um, uh, ascertain, and then what happened, what they came out with, what their weapons were. So I was traveling back from the community with Sotero Chavarria, who's the coordinator of organization for Copin, and he was also the driver of our, of our vehicle, as well as um, Asuncion Martinez, who's the secretary of Copin, and he was sitting in the back of the car. Um, and the people that attacked us, we, we don't know them. Um, when there was four of them, three of the attackers had machetes, and the fourth one was the driver of their vehicle, who was actually the most aggressive. What did they do when they came out of their car, when they came out of their vehicle? Bueno, los tres hombres que estaban armados con machetes intentaron... So the three men with the machetes, they came out of their car and they stood in front of where we were coming to block our, you know, block our vehicle from continuing forward. And they put their machetes in a position of attack um, to try to attack the car. Um, but the driver, um, he swerved, you know, our driver, Soltero, he swerved the car to the right, um, and we were able to go around the men with machetes. But then the driver of their vehicle, when he saw, you know, that we were swerving and the attack wasn't going to be successful, um, he then threw a rock at the window of, of our driver, of our vehicle. And Bertita, were you injured in any way? No, nosotros no subimos, no sufrimos ninguna lesión. Um, so we weren't injured, um, and we were also able to, um, you know, escape with the vehicle intact as well. But it was a big, you know, surprise and a big alert for us because it could have had very different consequences. And um, in many ways, it was luck that we were able to escape in the way that we were. Did you say they tried to, once you got back in your car and they chased you, they tried to push you off the road? Um, so, yes, the car then, once we passed the men with the machetes, they got back in their car and then at high speed um, caught up to us, and they put their car right alongside our car, and the road that we were traveling on had a cliff next to it, and so we were forced, you know, to the very edge of the cliff, and they put their cars if they were going to, you know, bump us off the cliff, but our driver was able to, you know, continue forward and not, not stop. Bertita Zuniga Cáceres, this comes just weeks after you were named the head head of Coping, the organization that your mother, the leading environmental indigenous rights activist Berta Cáceres, headed before she was assassinated. Um, do you think there's a link between your heading up Coping and what happened to you this weekend? I think that the Coping assembly process, which we just had, 
um, is a process that not only you know names the new leadership of the organization, but it's also a process that has reorganized and has strengthened the communities that make up Coquin, as well as our work. And so obviously the strengthening of the organization and of the communities is something that um, the economic and political powers that are, you know, that don't like our work are obviously concerned about, and so that could very much have to relate to this attack. Transnationales o empresa privada que se ve afectada con el trabajo del copín. It also comes right after you made a video calling for support for Congressman Hank Johnson's. Uh, bill that would cut off all U.S. military aid to Honduras. In particular, the law mandates a suspension of all military aid that the United States gives to Honduras until the murder case of Berta Cáceres is solved in an effective manner. But not just that case, but other cases that have been representative, like the cases in the Bajo Aguan region, like the cases of Honduran environmentalists who have died defending life in this country. Last year, Democracy Now! spoke to Congressman Hank Johnson of Georgia shortly after he introduced the bill to suspend all U.S. military aid to Honduras. Uh, the bill, of course, as we were saying, called the Berta Cáceres Human Rights and Honduras Act. Congressman Johnson explained what the pending legislation would do. This legislation would suspend financial aid to the Republic of Honduras for military operations and training and, um, and also weaponry uh, equipment. Uh, it would suspend uh, U.S. financial assistance to Honduras for those purposes uh, until such time as the Republic of Honduras can demonstrate that it has adequately and transparently investigated and taken action on the many killings, unlawful and extrajudicial killings, of human rights activists, environmental activists, LGBT uh, activists, human rights defenders uh, in Honduras. That was Georgia Congressman Hank Johnson, who's introduced a bill that would end U.S. military aid to Honduras, for now. Um, in addition to Bertita Zuniga Cáceres in La Esperanza, Honduras, who just survived an assassination attempt, we're joined by Matt Ginsburg Jekyll um, in Chicago. He's a longtime friend of both Bertita and her mother, Berta Cáceres, the murdered Honduran environmental indigenous activist. He's done solidarity work and supportive and translations for Coping for the last 17 years. He's a member of La Voz Los de Abajo, one of the founding groups of the Honduras Solidarity Network. Matt, welcome to Democracy Now! Your um, first response when you heard about the attempted assassination of your friend Bertita, who's on with us by Democracy Now! Uh, video stream from La Esperanza. I mean, it's extremely worrisome. It was a uh response of, really, fear for her well-being. But unfortunately, it wasn't a response of surprise. This is predictable. As long as money continues to flow to the Honduran security forces, as long as these conflicts are allowed to rage and no, and in a complete state of impunity, we can expect these kind of attacks. And, Bertita, can you directly address the men with machetes who attempted to kill you? last Friday. So I would tell them that we are going to continue forward in our struggle. Um, and part of our struggle is to break this cycle of impunity, um, and so that the people who carried out this attack, they, attack, they should be held responsible for their actions and for what they did. Bertita, how old are you, if I might ask? So I'm 26 years old. What makes you so brave? So, I was born into a people of great dignity and of great strength. And my mother, Berta Cáceres, instilled upon us um, from a very young age, you know, that the struggle is rooted in dignity um, and that, you know, we must continue forward defending the rights of our people. That was Bertita Zuniga Cáceres, the daughter of Berta Cáceres, the Honduran indigenous environmentalist assassinated March 2, 2016. Bertita herself just survived an assassination attempt.
Special thanks to Brigitte Ginther. Uh, we were also joined by B Matt Ginsburg Jekyll, a longtime friend of both Bertita and her mother. And Bertita was speaking to us from her home in La Esperanza, Honduras. She has now replaced her mother as head of COPING, the indigenous environmental organization. That does it for our show. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Dina Guzder, Nermeen Sheikh, Carla Wills, Laura Gattesdiener. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.